Hello again, and welcome. This is Michael Bazzola welcoming you to this value capping video rant. And today I want to cover uh, a couple of the major prep races for the 2014 Kentucky Derby. And these races are being run February 22nd, 2014. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Michael Pizzola. I'm author of the best-selling book, Handicapping Magic, co-author of the classic book, Pace Makes the Race, creator of the original online racing form, and publisher of Post Time Daily 2.0, and Black Magic, the ultimate handicapper software. All of that's over there at www.posttimedaily.com. Now, enough of that. Um, how about the races? Now, this is the time when the preps get a little more serious because uh, instead of getting a very few points towards the Kentucky Derby, a win in one of the two races I'm going to be looking at today um, earns 50 points towards the Derby standing. So there's a lot of competition and a lot of really good Colts. So let's get right down to it. The first is the Risen Star Stakes, which is the 11th race at Fairgrounds. Now, I look at these prep races, and for that matter, the Triple Crown races and the Breeders' Cup races, as opportunities for investment. I don't call what I do handicapping anymore. I call it value capping. I'm looking for the really good value investments. And one quick glance at the Risen Star tells me that the assessment that the Blackmagic software, my assessment of the race, is going to be very similar to the public's. The horse right on top is Rise Up. You know, this is the Thomas Amos horse that's, um, you know, four for six wins lifetime. It, excuse me, it's a colt, not a horse. But you know what I mean. And it's been on a layoff since November 13th. But still, it's got, you know, really nice and big numbers. It won the Jean Lafitte at Delta. It won a grade three at Delta in November. Boy, oh boy. And it's going to be bet. If I were wanting to look at the second horse down, Vickers in Trouble, well, this is a Michael Maker horse that's won two out of its three races. It just, its very first start, it didn't win. Wins a grade three last time um, right here at Fairgrounds. And, you know, uh, this, I don't know much about trainer trainers, but this trainer has been winning a lot of races. I think he's, well, you can see it. He's 23% um, this year. I'm, that's you know, pretty darn good. So I, I, I don't get interested when my assessment of the race um, really matches what the public should do. The third horse on the line is the one Albano, I think. I would be really gambling. I would just have to um, uh, look and see what the public did with this. But I, I, I do think that the public is going to uh, bet the two and the and the 14, rise up and Vickers in trouble. I don't think there'll be any prices there. Uh, Albano should be a you know very big price. Uh, yeah, I would have to get very, very highly compensated to bet a horse that I make nine to one. That means... If they run the race, according to my assessment, 10 times, this horse will lose nine times and win once. So I would have to get a very, very long price to get involved. This is the kind of race I don't spend very much time on. I just want to go through and look. There are some other uh, kind of minor stakes at Gulfstream before we get to the main event, the Fountain of Youth. Um, once again, we see in the Devona Dale, the top two horses or the top two heavy morning line uh, favorites nine to five and two to one and stop charging Maria and only for you. I'm not going to spend a lot of time, certainly not now on the race. Uh, in the Canadian turf stakes, we see the same thing three to one and four to one, the top horses. Um, you know, I'm not interested. These aren't really, uh, uh these are not derby preps. They're just kind of undercard stakes races, which brings us to the fountain of youth, the 11th race at Gulfstream, February 22nd, 2014. Once again, the top four morning line favorites are the top four horses. Now, uh, Colts, again, sorry. And, you know, it's not that Black Magic does this very often. Very often, it'll put, 
you know, bomb horses on top, I mean, long price horses, just because of the way that it assesses the horse's performance and goes back deep sometimes into the past performances. So this is not usual. And if we were to look at these horses, we see top billing, the Shug McGahee horse, who, you know, has run three, uh, Colt, excuse me, has run three races, finished, you know, second by a neck in one, um, won its maiden in grand style, um, closed to just miss at an allowance non-winners, one second back, and just one last time uh, at his non-winners, one now stepping up. So uh, obviously one of the, you know, venerable trainers of all times think, this colt is ready to run a really good derby prep. Uh, he, he should be very well bet. One thing he's uh, really got going for him is that he's a deep closer. And this race uh, favors the closer because it's a highly pressured race. If we were to look at the track profiles, which looks at the charts for a mile and 16th from Gulfstream, we see that in the energy column, Save for that last race at 52.46, we see 50.8, 51.36, 50.0, 50.97, and then there's a 52. But see that cluster? Boy, those are really um, late races. And you see the Sabin Stakes that was run on uh, February 16th, a grade three, 50.8 is very late. I would anticipate this race favoring one of the late horses. But again, top billing is 7-2 morning line. Here we have the second horse on the line, Wildcat Red. Not much wrong with this horse. I mean, it's, you know, an improving three-year-old colt, won its last race in grand style. Another horse, never been out of the money, never been worse than second. So um, this is a, uh, you know, certainly a contender in the race. Once again, Mr. Michael Maker, who's been apparently very hot down there uh, in Florida, uh, has General A-Rod. Two for three, missed one race. It won a um, the Gulfstream uh, Derby, $100,000 non-graded race. Hasn't anything wrong. Closed from out of the clouds uh, in its first start at Keeneland. So, again, this horse should be bet. Here's the horse that Black Magic does not give very good numbers to. Um, it's Commissioner which is the morning line favorite and should be bet. This is Todd Pletcher's entry. And after, you know, not running very well, well, finishing second in its maiden with a very deep close, it closes to win second back, closes to win uh, in its last race. It has the right kind of energy uh, expenditure for the race. And this horse uh, should be bet. And, you know, probably the public is right to bet this. Maybe the dark horse in the race, or the dark colt, is Casiguapo. Um, and the, the software went way back to take a race from last July at Calder. Um, this uh, Hard to assess what this um, colt will do. Uh, the only reason I'm looking at it, it's 30 to 1, and had kind of a strange race last time out. Where it was seven by fifth, drops back to eight and a half lengths, drops back further to ten lengths, and then kind of moves forward two positions. Don't know if that was a little move. It was a preparation for the Fountain of Youth. Um, it does have early energy expenditure. I might, if I get involved in this race, use it in exotics, looking for a bomb to hook up with one of these. So I think the public has the right uh, for horses, um, top billing Wildcat Red. General A-Rod and Commissioner with Casiguapo being a real dark horse or dark colt. Um, I, I think they'll go pretty heavily for top billing and Commissioner, uh, which is unfortunate because usually they don't like closers all that much. This may leave, you know, nice prices on the four and the five. Not a very clear and obvious race to me. Whenever I look and my top odds are six to one, I know it's going to be, you know, um, a pretty murky kind of race. I'd like to see where um, the software and my numbers give a more of an advantage to one of the entrants so I can really look at getting an overlay. But they may just forget about one of these, you know, very uh, um, feasible mid-price horses here, this four, or this five, and uh, where I get uh, double digits, I'd probably bet one of them 
But I, I, again, when the public shares your assessment, it, that's not a great race to get into. Remember, the object of value capping is f to find a horse you like that the public shouldn't. So that's my assessment of the Risen Star and the Fountain of Youth, the two big derby preps for February 22nd, 2014. Now, uh, I do want to tell you a story. I don't usually spend a whole lot of time analyzing a race because uh, all of the things I do um, are built into the software program. That's why I built it, and that's why, uh, you know, lots of people use it and doing well with it. But something happened today that was most unusual, and I'd like to share that with you. So I was sitting at the race book today, and I had to consult with someone there about our turf and uh, off-track numbers, and I found myself on the phone with one of the senior programmers on our programming team, and we were talking about the new value capper software. And by the way, I'm using the experimental value capper software. Blackmagic will look almost identical. There are a few cosmetic changes um, but don't worry, uh, this is, um, I just didn't want to change my, uh, my machine to make this video, so it's virtually the same. Certainly the numbers at this point are the same as what those of you who use Blackmagic are looking at. And I got this really unusual email, <clears throat> and the email was to my private email address, and it just simply said, what do I do? And it had a picture of the odds board at Tampa Bay in the eighth race. And I'm just thinking, well, who, who would write me? Who would ask me this? And so I asked the senior programmer to hold on. And um, turns out it's a family friend, a friend of my, my mother's. And I guess she was uh, on a <clears throat> junket to a casino back east or something, and found herself in a race book. And now, you know, you have to be nice. I don't tout horses. I don't like touting horses. That's not what I do. I like to explain what the bet is, you know, long-winded and all of that. So I opened up the race. I looked at it. I saw this horse three hoist the colors. And, you know, I looked back in its past performances, and it just had these very big numbers on the turf from Indiana and then a five furlong race from Arlington. And its recent numbers didn't look that good. So I answered... You know, I didn't want to not answer. I asked, well, it's a bad betting race because, you know, it looked like the public was having the the uh, uh, the contention, right, like we saw in those derby prep races we just looked at. But I, I, I told her, look, if you want to gamble, yeah, that gets this three horse and maybe use the two, six, and seven in exotics. And, you know, I kind of left it at that and kind of forget it, for, forgot about it because we were talking about really important stuff like, you know, um, the percentage of adjustment that should go on the third fraction as opposed to the second fraction in certain distances and, uh, you know, really, really arcane thing to because we're constantly improving the software. So I, I just ignored the race. I forgot completely about it until I got this other little email that said, oh, how very, very nice because you know, you know the end of the story, right? Hoist the colors, one for fun. And, you know, it was 6.6 .6 to one, paid 15.20. Of course, the two came in second, completing a $41 exacta, almost $42 exacta. And I got this beautiful email with a picture of the lovely little horsey in triumph. So um, wherever you are, mom's friend, I hope you're happy. <laughs> So that's what happens. And, I, you know, it's a little bit of the strength of the software. And sometimes uh, you're better off not overanalyzing. The, the software, like, does a lot of the work for you. And if you want to second guess it, well, do everything by hand. And don't pay too much attention to the software. I thought that was funny. And I, uh, I got a couple of emails from some of you who had this, uh, this horse as well and wanted to share that with me. But bravo for those of you who did. Shame on me for, not, for being in a race book and not paying attention. I hope that was helpful, and I hope what you're uh, gaining from these video rants is not so much that, you know, Black Magic could pick a horse or Michael Bazzola could pick a horse. Big deal. Who cares? And it's not about, oh, gee, I wonder who he likes. Again, big deal. I want 
to improve your ability, no matter what tool you are, whether you're a speed handicapper, a pace handicapper, a trainer jockey handicapper, a class handicapper, whatever it is, I want to emphasize the value aspect to find horses you like that the public shouldn't and to let the bet make you. I hope this finds you well. Thank you so much for sharing this time with me. And until next time, enjoy and let the bet make you. I'll see you soon.